The L322 Range Rover is the pinnacle of Land Rovers in my opinion, and even though this one is near perfect for me and for what I use it for, there are still some options that if I had bought it new, I would have selected and ticked the boxes for. Next week, I have a video coming out all about why this L322 was the perfect L322 for me, but uh, there are some things I still would have changed given the option. First of all, though, I really don't mind it not being an autobiography. This is just an HSE with the luxury package. The autobiography is something that I would love to buy one day for the channel, but as far as something that I was looking for for my daily driver and my personal Range Rover, having the autobiography wasn't something I necessarily absolutely had to have. Sure, you get the extra power and the prestigiousness of having the autobiography edition, but it was really never something that tickled my fancy to the point where I said, I have to have this over an HSE. First option that I would have selected that isn't on this one is the adaptive cruise control. I absolutely loathe driving this thing on back roads. For me, it's just personally unpleasant. It's not that it can't do it. For me, it's just not where the L322 belongs. Highways and I suppose off-road, but really highways are where the L322 comes into play for me and it's really where it's in an element of its own. I love turning the music up, setting the cruise control, and just blasting down the highway relaxing. I enjoy a good sporty driving experience or good sporty driving afternoon as much as the next guy, but when it comes down to it, that is not what this thing is built for. But it would actually be nice to have the adaptive cruise control to where if a car gets in front of you and slows down, the car slows down, as well as having the forward collision mitigation by braking. These are options that I would actually really like to have on this thing because highways, for me, like I said, are really where I enjoy driving the L322. Unfortunately though, that option was only available on the supercharged models and higher and even on the supercharged models was still a $2,000 option. The second option, which is actually available on the HSE base model is the vision assistance package or the vision assist pack. I've said before that I don't mind not having the cameras and the blind spot monitoring and really for the most part that's true. It's never been something that's concerned me to the point where I just had to get rid of this one and get another one. But it would have been nice on the off-road adventure that we went on a couple of months ago. To be able to see what was going on around me would have been a little more helpful for, I don't even know that you can call me a novice, for just someone who had no idea what they were doing. It would have been nice. And on top of that, having blind spot monitoring would be a nice little feature as well. More importantly than that though is the automatic high beam assist. Not that you ever need the high beams in the L322, it does a pretty good job on the low beams as it is, but it would be nice. Had I been the one to spec this car new, I would have paid the additional $1,800 or so to have the Vision Assist package. I feel like the L322, at least the base model, is really kind of lacking in rear passenger comfort. So with that, I go back and forth with this next one, mainly because it would be nice to have more back here, but no one ever spends time back here. Buying used, I wasn't too concerned with it, but if I were buying it new, I would select the rear seat entertainment for the headrest, as well as the rear seat reclining features. The rear seat entertainment in the L322 includes the two screens in the headrest, as well as two headphones that are wireless, as well as a remote control with a little Land Rover logo on it. All of that for $2,500, and on top of that, the rear seat reclining feature has a four-way adjustable headrest. It also has front passenger seat controls as well as front passenger memory settings. And I really don't understand on why a car that was around $93,000 brand new, this doesn't have front passenger seat memory. Why? The 7 Series that we had from 2011, around the same price, brand new, it had it. So why doesn't this? And the last option that I wish I had in this L322 was the Jet Headliner. This would come in at a total of about $400, and while I don't necessarily mind the gray sadness that is what Land Rover called the ivory headliner, it just doesn't work well with the jet black leather. More than anything else on this list, this is what bothers me most about this car. Excuse me for this, but it reminds me of a cheap Lexus. Why would a company produce such a beautiful interior and then leave this gray cloud of sadness and depression up in the headliner. I'm sure this looks great with different color combinations in the L322. With the jet black interior, why would you not get the jet headliner? I understand the ivory headliner was a bit of a contrast for the L322's interior, but it just doesn't look good. It's 
grayish yellow sadness. Overall, it's just way too contrasting and given the option of $400 to change it out to a black headliner, it's one I really would have selected. Oh. So there it is. That is everything that I would change about this L322 if I was the one who had ordered it from the factory. I would keep the color, I would keep the wheels, I would keep the luxury package and not opt for the supercharged or autobiography. But next week we'll talk all about why this L322 ended up being the best one I could find and the one that fit my vision the best.